Hello, everybody, and welcome to the neutrino weather of this week, March 22nd till March 28th. So let's have a look what the energetic weather is bringing us this week. Um, yeah, one of the first things that I, I was, uh, I, I wanted to share is that when the sun moves into the 25th gate uh, and, and basically the rest of, here you see it, the rest of the quarter of initiation, in some way or another, I mean, the 25th gate, the 17th gate, the 21st gate and the 51st gate, they are part of um, the Godhead called Michael. And so in some way or another, it's also, it's, it's like, how are we going to start relating with the other? Hmm? In the first eight gates that we've been going through in the quarter of initiation so far, it was all about absorbing in some way or another life through the emotional center. And now we are moving slowly, slowly, deeper and deeper into this, okay, coming to start and meet the other. And, um, yeah, there is a challenge in all of that. Mm -hmm. And the challenge in some way or another is, can we learn to meet the other in their uniqueness, in, in the... With a, with a deep recognition of the interconnectedness that, you know, basically holds us all together. So the other is just another part of myself in some way or another. You know? And so when we look at the overall um, weather of the week, we see... And, and we take this into account as, as the, the theme that sits there. It's like, okay, we have to start paying attention then to the fact that still for, I don't know exactly till when, but um, let's have a look all the way till the sun moves into the 17th, which will be on the 24th on Sunday around noon somewhere, there's going to be the 2551 in the air. No? And so this channel over here, 2551, it has two sides. No? It has a side that talks about an opportunity for centeredness in the innocence of our heart and to, you know, especially from tomorrow, the 22nd onwards, the 25th, the 26th, uh, sorry, the 23rd and the 24th, there is this energy of like, okay, you know, it's an externalization and inclusively a, a, a potential to bring the healing aspect of love forward. And with a centeredness and the innocence and the childlikeness of who we are in the 2551. So when you take it as a weather to go deeper into oneself and one's innocence and one's centeredness, fantastic. But if you get distorted by this kind of weather, it can also play out in several ways. You know, there can be a, there can be a play out in the sense that mm, you know you start standing up in terms of a design of needing to be first in terms of a second one. No? So there is a there is a competitiveness that sets itself, that brings itself forward. I want to be first. You are second. And so that, that's a possibility. And in that sense, you know, there is this righteousness that comes out of it. And in some way or another, there is a cruelty that comes together with it, you know, because we don't really see the other for who, for another expression of, you know, love the same way as we are. So 
um, and that obviously pushes on the yeah the the the, the strong egoic um, my agenda over your agenda kind of thing. You know? So that's that's a weather that is out there and something to take into account all the way till Sunday. And um, some other aspects, obviously, that that are also there in the weather in the coming days, you know, from uh, from Friday onwards, is it's this twenty the the the, the fifty first gate. You know, is accentuating also our mental realm. You know? So there is also there is also a a kind of um, yeah, potential for how do you, in some way or another cockiness you know, in the expression of one's stance. You know? Obviously, when we look at the when we look at the political realm. Um, these last uh, five, six days, it's like, yeah, you know, that's definitely there. And um, what is also accentuated in the in the days to come is um, there's this conjunction between uh, Venus and Saturn in the sixty third gate. You know? So there is a possibility to look with scrutiny at patterns, but there is also a possibility of getting confused there, you know, of basically starting to doubt and, um, and starting to be skeptical towards what is out there. So, um, yeah, if that starts adding fuel to this egoic agenda, then obviously, you know, it accentuates, this is my agenda, this is my righteousness, and I don't trust you. I'm skeptical about whatever it is that you bring forward in your way of seeing at things. So, um, yeah, that that that's, from my perspective at least, something that is in the... Um, in the energetic mix for the days to come, for the week to come. So when we um, when we move further and we see the sun entering into the 17th gate, we get into a position that in some way or another is even more um, challenging. The righteousness, in some way, can even be more accentuated. You know? So, the seventeen gate is a gate that says, and I, I mean, I, I love looking at these overarching descriptions of the hexagram. It says the ancient law that those who wish to rule must know how to serve. So basically, it's saying that the ancient law that those thoughts, because this is a position in the accent in the Ashna center. Those thoughts that wish to rule must know how to serve. You know? So in, in the 17th gate, we are here to the, the, the thoughts that are oriented towards the interconnectedness of all life. That's what this is really about. You know? That's why Ra was referring very often to the 17th gate as you know, the gate or that shows us that there in life there is no end to hierarchies. We're not really here in 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 life to to think that we are um, on top of the chain. You know, there is always we're always part of something larger and larger and larger. The beauty of the seventeen gate is to see our exact positioning within this larger frame. You know, and that. And, and to have the possibility through the 18th gate to constantly fine-tune our unique pattern and how to attune it to, it to a larger pattern. So, obviously, 
that's that's something that sits there you know that's the, the, the potential sits there for if you want to use this 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 weather to your advantage you know it can be a driving force in that sense you know? a driving force from sunday onwards to really see how we are part of something larger to recognize our own pattern to find you ourselves in it to find spirit within our own position to go through the difficulties and the friction and to have the courage to stand up for ourselves and tune into who we are and then we have access to energy that is about growth and we can overcome certain limitations and grow into a completely new kind of expression obviously all of that is like from that perspective that's great weather there's always another side the other side is always oriented towards what happens if we tap into this weather through the mind and then it over accentuates again you know something that we are already looking we're already there is already a view on you know my agenda better than your agenda and these this like unwillingness and to listen to each other to come to dialogue okay which is actually you know at this stage in the quarter of initiation that's where we must in some way or another learn to move towards that that there is no there is no use in in or the, what's the purpose of not recognizing that we are interconnected hmm? so this is something that that you know then starts accentuating that my agenda is better than your agenda and uh, and on and on and on which obviously generates more crisis and more suspiciousness towards one another and you know more a feeling of emptiness and, and 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 obviously you know like i've been pointing out already last week there is a, there is still a significant amount of potential sadness depression heaviness melancholy in the activations that are basically being bombarded on us so um let's move forward because on the 25th we have an eclipse taking place you know um here in Europe, it's somewhere in the afternoon. Um, the the moon and the uh, earth are in the same position. So um, here again, you know, this this I, I'm not so familiar with with how these 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 celestial uh, events actually influence. But it's basically what we can see, or at least I can see in the 18th gate, that it's in a position that says the futile raging against the wind, the refusal to accept that things are what they are, and we better take it from there. You know? So um, in some way or another, it can add fuel it can add fuel on this righteousness that is in the air mm -hmm. and um you know, the question then obviously becomes if if there is so much if there is an adherence an adherence at righteousness and suspiciousness and that it kind of accentuates the unwillingness to accept that there is another side then you know um uranus is also going to you know that that each like it, it diminishes the potential to see in some way or another that we each have our own unique view on things and our own expression in things and it accentuates the fact that you know we're moving deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the darkness of a crisis that seems uh, inevitable that 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 in that that sensation of inevitability that things are only going to get worse so um yeah that that you know and that it leads there that it's that that's where the growth seems to be going that's where the development seems to be going so obviously you know it's it's something to to take into account 
we can see these things internationally playing out, but it's something to take count to take uh, into account in our personal lives that we're, we're really in a period where um, dialogue is important. Dialogue and what's your view? What's my view? How come that I look at the situation like this and you look at the situation like that? And you know, let's have an appreciation for each other's individual stance in all of that. Um, and and luckily, in some way or another, you know, um, Venus comes to the foreground and says, "Hey, you know, it's time to listen to each other." You know, so um, yeah, those those. Um, those things are there. What I really, what I really appreciate a lot about the 18th Gate is that the 18th Gate is basically about the establishment and the upholding of of fundamental human rights. No, you can see it in its heading. It says vigilance and determination to uphold and defend basic and fundamental human rights. And so um, there is an opportunity there to see that. Hey, come on, you know. Um, we share a humanness. We share um, a vulnerability as humans. We we share needs for freedom, for development, for growing into our potential of consciousness and awareness. And those things are worth upholding. And you know, if we if 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 only we can come to communication so that we can see that. You know, there is ways in some way or another to be of, be of, of service to these, um, you know, to these life affirming patterns instead of getting stuck in my agenda over your agenda, my view better than your view, and this twenty and, and this fifty first gate in the in the um, in the nodes that basically holds up the middle finger to the other one. You know? So there's there's definitely, um, yeah, it, it, it can be a very rich time to, um, to, to try to go into uh, expressions of what we call or know as diplomacy. Let's try to see each other's standpoint in all of this and let's see in some way or another how we can uphold and defend um, basic fundamental human rights so those are themes that are on the on the horizon this week um, we can also see that um, in the emotional system there is the 55 and the 22 you know? so again the, the potential melancholy, and here it's an emotionalized melancholy that is bombarded on us. Um, and, you know, again, Martian influence. So the, the, this, this line in particular talks about the bursting of the bubble. So learning to observe the emotional wave with equanimity brings us in touch with our spirit of interconnectedness and compassion as human beings that's one of the things that human design brings forward so you know it can be very heated in terms of feelings and how we stand in all of it but again you know Let's, through this combination of Venus and Mars, let's do our best to listen to each other, even though it's not necessarily so straightforward. And we'll see that, you know, that's where growth comes from. You know, the, you, it, it, the, the 55th gate then slowly moves into the 55.5, which is, you know, basically learning to grow in our spirit through learning to ex expose ourselves in our vulnerability and how we feel about things and learning to listen to the other and what their position is. You know, that's in some way, I, I 
prefer to look at the fact that we can, as a reflector, at least my perspective on the weather, like we can learn to use the weather in order to, you know, grow more into ourselves. We obviously each have our own unique stance and our own unique intelligence that guides us through all of it. But if we're able to look at the weather as something that we can take advantage of, the same way that we look at meteorology, we take advantage of the meteorology. And in energetically speaking, the same potential lays there. So here, you know, there can be a potential to really learn to listen to each other. And, and, and from that, you know, Again, here the 18 gate in the fifth gate in the fifth line, the possibility to listen to each other's position, you know, that together we can maybe find in some way or another a solution or you know a, yeah, a dialogue that is empowering for each side of the conversation. You know? So um yeah. I prefer to look at the weather like that in order to be, I mean, to have a, 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 a more yeah, like a mentally fatalistic view in it and go like, well, you know, this is really challenging weather. This is really weather that is like, you know, potentially very dark and, uh, you know, sad and, and, and scary and all this kind of stuff. No? What's the point? So, um, yeah, that, from my perspective at least, um, concludes my reflections on the on this week's weather. I the only thing I I would like point put forward like I did last week is um, Jupiter is giving us an enormous opportunity to tune in. It's, a, it's giving us an opportunity to, to tap into our body intelligence and to feel that life is a gift. You know? uh, the, the second gate is the most yin gate of all. And so to tune into that the receptivity of life, you know, that each breath is given to us. It's not something that I do. It's something that is given to me. And um, from that perspective, there is this possibility of you know, seeing, oh, wow, and these are the patterns that I see through all of that. And what is interesting in that sense is that with a, with a Jupiterian positioning that is so oriented towards the yinness, towards the receptiveness, and a possibility through uh, Saturn, to be inquiring and looking at patterns is a good weather to see. And obviously with, with uh, Mars here in the 55 and the fifth line, this is like great weather to see one's conditioning programming. You know, to, to see like, oh, okay, these are patterns that I'm in and this is what it is to be receptive to life. So yeah, with this note, I wish you a great week. And um, yeah, a nice navigation of the neutrino imprinting. Bye. <laughs>